Okay, so we'll look at the greatest common factor of uh, these two numbers, 125 and 126. Um, so 126 and 105. One way I can do that is to look at the factor trees. 105 is a multiple of 5 times 21. 21 is 7 times 3. We keep um, following these factor trees until we get to the prime numbers. 5, 7, 3 are all prime. 126, I think that's 2 times 63. 63 is 9 times 7. Quick note, I knew that because 6 times 3 is added to 9, and 6 is 1 less than 7. It's a way of thinking about the multiples of 9. 9 can be thought of as 3 times 3. And now we have all of our primes. To find the greatest common factor, just match up the prime factors. So here I have 1, 3. Here I have 1, 3. Here I have 1, 7. There I have 1, 7. So that means that 21 goes into each number. 7 times 3 and 7 times 3. And look at that. There's our greatest common factor. Okay, so now we got a question 52. I think you'll see a lot of questions like this where you'll hear about these different people. In this case, Simone, Marco, and Yvonne. They're partners in business. And you'll get this kind of language where one is making twice or three times as much as the other. If the total profit profit is blank, how much did Evan receive? So one way to think about this is in terms of algebra. So we know the total profit equals 1,800. And we know there are three people involved, Simone, Marco, Evan. And we know Simone and Marco each received twice as much profit as Evan received. So the way you might want to think about this is start with Evan because that's the base. Yvonne made some amount, and then, well, Marco made twice that amount, and Simone made twice the amount that Yvonne made. So whatever Yvonne made will tell us what they all received. So altogether, we have one, two, three, four, five x's. So five x's equals $1,800 in profit. We divide both sides by five, and we get that x equals, well, how do we do this? That goes into 1,000 200 times, and it goes into 800. I think of that as 5 going to 120 times. 800s are 8 times 20, so 160. So 5 goes into this 360 times. And that is um, Avon's salary right there. Now we have, I think, a typical question where we're dealing with um, points on a line. And they'll give you some sort of relationship between different line segments. And then we have to figure out some mystery line segment. Anyway, here we have NQ equals 30. So NQ equals 30 centimeters. And that's from here to here. Now, the ratio of MN to NQ is 3 to 2. So MN right here is longer than NQ. And the ratio from one to the other is 3 to 2. So that means, uh, I mean, you think of it as 6 to 4, or anything you want to. MN is 1.5 times longer than NQ. So that means that MN is 1.5 times longer than 30, which is 45 centimeters. So now we also know that NP to PQ is 2 to 1. And that's helpful because... Uh, look at this over here. NP is right here, and this PQ is right here. So NP is two times bigger than PQ, and this is helpful because it brings us back to our original uh, NQ, this whole thing right here. So we have 30 centimeters in total. They want to know what number plus twice that number gives me 30 centimeters. So that means 3x is 30, and x is equal to 10. So that means that PQ, little PQ, must be 10, and that NP must be 20. And that adds up to NQ being 30. So they want to know what is the length of MP, which is from this point right here to here. So I'm also going to do a little process of elimination to help myself out. A is out, can't be 5. Um, and now we have these right here. Well, MN this whole section right here, we know that's 45. So it's got to be more than 45 because now we have MP. 
So this is out. So now we have three choices. And let's let's figure out which one it is. Well, uh, we don't know MP is, and NQ is thirty, and MP MN excuse me is forty five. So what do we do? Well, we have this segment here NP, which is twenty, and we want to add it to M um, MN. And then we get our answer. So MN is going to be 45 centimeters. And NP is 20 centimeters. So in total, we have a 65 centimeter line segment. Um, so here's another type of question, 54, scientific notation. Well, um, when you're solving a scientific notation, remember that, um, that the form is that the first number right here has is from 1 to 10 and it does not include 10 so you can't use 10 in the first number but you can use something very close like 9.999 and that times 10 to some power and that's the format so all these formats k is out because 48 is too large f and g are out these numbers are less than 1 so either has to be h or j and I think you'll see that what makes the most sense is if we write it as 4.8762 times um, something, what do we do? Well, we made 48 10 times smaller. So in fact, we need to make this next number even larger. But to get there, let me just go back to our original, which is 48.762. If I times that by 100, this will make everything clearer. It'll become 487. 6.2. This is our number, and they want to know what this is in scientific notation. That's nice and easy. It's 4.8762. My decimal goes right here. And then times 10 to the blank. Well, we made this number a lot smaller by moving the decimal this way. And every time we move it one space, you make it 10 times smaller. So we would do it 1, 2, 3, we made it 1,000 times smaller. So if we're going to write in scientific notation and balance it out, we have to make this number a thousand times bigger. So it's 4.8762 times 10 to the third, and that's J.